joined by Mr. Edward Hearn, Mr. Jake Paul. Great. Thanks. It's on. It's on. It's on. You know, my, my co-partner here, my business partner, my promotional partner. It's been a lot of fun. Um, massive week last week, of course. Second biggest pre-sale of all time at MSG. You saw the turnout today and last week. It's one of the biggest fights in boxing and uh, can't wait. It's a cracker. First question for you, Jake. Have you ever heard of a plonker? Before Eddie had nah, he's like, it's it? a friendly term. I'm like, it doesn't sound like it. It sounds like, it sounds like it is, plunger. Plonker, you know, it's friendly. Eddie, I think what Eddie does is he compliments me and then he says I'm shit because he still wants to appeal to the boxing purists. No, I don't want to diss track. You know, know what I mean? I've seen the diss tracks. No, no, no. I mean, I think he's a plunker. <laughs> well, Jake, let me ask you, when Eddie Hearn promoted you and an Eason Gibb, which was in Miami at the start of 2020? Yeah, yeah. Or 20, yeah, 2020. 2020. Yeah. Did you kind of see this process with you in boxing involved now in like, so the biggest women's fight ever? Did you see a kind of a, a route to this process? Uh, not at the time, you know, not, not at the time. I, I needed to prove myself as a fighter and grow my name. Um, but once I did that, you know, I knew I wanted to get involved on the promotional side of things, and that's how this road led to where we are today. Same question for you. Did you kind of see no, yourself no, working in this you know, capacity? I, mean, that was, uh, I never expected him to go on and do what he's doing. You know, there's a difference between YouTube boxing and what Jake's doing, in my opinion. YouTube boxing is where he started, but you have to give him credit for actually going through the process, fighting fight, fighters, not necessarily boxers yet, but he's tried and that's obviously incoming so I don't really put him in that bracket anymore but did I ever expect to be co-promoting the biggest female fight of all time at the Madison Square Garden with Jake Paul absolutely not in a fucking million years but we're here and it's working really well I said there there's so much bitterness in boxing sometimes you can co-promote a show with another promoter they hate you that much they'd rather it failed than it was a success but Jake's fresh into boxing. He's not really been, you know, hit with that bitter brush yet, where he genuinely wants to make money for his fighters and make the event as big as possible. And whether he likes me or not, and vice versa, we want this show to be the biggest show it could possibly be. And you'll see the result of that on April 13th. Would you say this man is the most talked about person in boxing? I mean, from a, in terms of a wider audience, yeah, I would. You know, I mean, you've got like, from a boxing perspective, maybe even from a boxing perspective right now, you know, obviously has a huge following and, you know, that's one of the reasons we wanted to get involved in the first place when we did Logan against KSI. I saw it firsthand, the numbers. It was like nothing we'd experienced before. But I do think that, you know, not just saying it because he's here, but I do think he's actually fallen in love with the sport of boxing, as we all have over the years. And when you do that, you want the best for the sport. And obviously he's making money, he's fighting, you know. We're not doing that, are he's, get, he's stepping through the ropes and fighting, so you have to give him some respect to a level. He thinks he can go and be a world champion. Obviously, I don't, people don't, but he's out to prove people wrong. That's, that's what he wants to do. That's a comment that Eddie Earn made on uh, TalkSport earlier this morning, is that he doesn't believe you'll become a world champion. You know you've spoken about the likes of Canelo, etc., which yeah. you've kind of said like, well, I don't know really what you're saying. You're saying that obviously him and Canelo is, is borderline ridiculous. Like, like, like any fighter starting up, when I say he won't be a world champion, there's there's thousands of active fighters that I would say you're not going to be a world champion. It's not it's not disrespect. Like to be a world champion is the hardest thing. I don't I just don't feel you can walk into the sport in your twenties and go on and be an elite fighter. That's a wilder but, idea. You know, that, I mean, Deontay Wilder is one of the few who who have done it, but. And, and he's an inspiration in that sense to me, but you know, no one thought I could do anything that I've done, you know? I, it seemed crazy for me to be able to beat Ben Askren. Then it was like, oh, well, it was just a wrestler. Then, then it seemed crazy for me to beat a five-time UFC champion. So, you know, then it seemed crazy for me to sign up to fight Tommy Fury, heavyweight, his brother's the heavyweight champion of the world. So, you know, I, I, I respect the criticism. And by the way, if I was Eddie, I'd probably say the same thing, but people don't know who I am as an individual besides myself. I know what's in my head and I know what I can accomplish. So if I really set my mind to it, then I know that I'll be able to it's do not, it. It's not, it's not, don't always take it as a criticism. I respect what you're doing, but it's just an opinion. You know, that, yeah, that's and, and I would say yeah, the same yeah. about some fighters over there that yeah, might be yeah. British champions. I don't believe they will be world champion either. It's a very elite few. But listen, good luck. Jake, Jake, let me ask you though, one of the criticisms, and you're losing these criticisms as everyday passes, by the way, but one of them is that you haven't fought 
what people deem as a legitimate oh, boxer. He did try. Yeah. I tried, I tried. He tried, he, okay. He, but Tommy's uh, doing he got injured happen, or whatever, yeah. But yeah. that hasn't happened yet for whatever reason. So is that something that's still on your list to kind of maybe prove to sure. boxing fans that actually, you know, I have fought a couple of boxers. For sure, you know. And look at Gervonta Davis. In his eighth fight, he fought a guy who was 0 0. That was an MMA fighter. He beat him, and that guy never fought again. Canelo, same thing. In his 10th fight, fought a guy who was 0 0. I'm in my fifth fight, my rookie season, you know, and, uh, you know, Mike Tyson fought his 15th fight. A guy with sneakers on who came, got, got him off the street just to knock him out. So, you know, I, I'm building and people need to be a little bit patient. It's only been two years since my professional debut and that is well on the agenda and don't hold your breath because it's going to happen very soon. Or hold, hold your breath because I don't know what that <laughs> Something, like that. Yeah. something <laughs> like that. Hold your breath or some shit. Yeah. You're best friends with Canelo, aren't you, Eddie? <laughs> right? What is what is Canelo when you're kind of away from cameras and you're chilling in his his villa in Guadalajara or wherever? What does he say about it? It's Paul? not something that we've really discussed, but I've seen his comments on it. And to be fair to him, he doesn't actually. I think he realises that one day it could be a, could be a massive fight, massive payday. But he's never. I've never heard him go. Ah, oh, he's this, he's that. Canelo, you know. <laughs> what's up, buddy? Well, listen. I mean, Canelo's. I think got other. So you plans. don't rule it out. I can't, I'm not speaking on behalf of Canelo, but what I'm saying is he's never gone ridiculous. Oh, that's a, you know that's insulting. He's gone. Listen. You well, never know. He's, he's, he's cool with Ryan Garcia, right? Yeah, and yeah. so he knows the power of social media and how that is, is the new era of boxing. Right? They train at the same gym. So it's these Team Canelo, Ryan Garcia's Team Canelo. He knows. He knows. And and it's going to happen. I, I would seem crazy, but it's going to happen. What, what's your thoughts on Marius Breedus? Say it again? Marius Breedus. What is that? What is that? Edward Joyner? Yeah, it's just some cruiserweight. Marius? He calls you out every day. He's a he got the tattoo. Of, you know, the cruiserweight guy that got the uh, tattoo. He's the he's a world champion. Yeah. Yes. He's the one who got the tattoo. I seen something about it, but I it I didn't. It's it good. just looks weird. It's good for Maris Bradis that he's gone to all this effort and had a tattoo, and you actually haven't even seen it yet. So it's going well. He's. Uh, he, he needs to fight our guy. We, we, we got a guy called Lawrence Nicoli. He's the real deal at Cruiserweight. We want him to unify against Bradis rather than keep talking about fighting you. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Sorry. Is the Tommy Fury fight out the? Water yeah, now? he needs to go. He should fight Tyron Woodley or go on the undercard of his brother's fight, but he needs to do something to, to make me care again. Okay, and final word about this fight, 30th of April, it's going to be a sellout Huge. MSG. Huge, he's Team Serrano, I'm Team Taylor, I'm sure we'll have a little bit later down the line, but he believes. Oh! Big, big fight, isn't it? My fighter's going to win. I did say, my fighter's going to win. I was joking the other day, someone said, you should fight Jake Paul and someone said that he'd knock me out and I thought he's actually probably right. Probably so. So yeah. But a lot of people like to see that though, me getting knocked clean out by you. But you know <laughs> we'll see. I'll, Final I'll word to you, side. Jake. What's good? Final word to you, just yeah, roll on April the thirtieth. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> MSG.com, get your tickets, baby. Thank you.